it's it's just hard. You Perhaps the most asked question on my channel that I have been, not purposefully, but intentionally, it's the same thing. Avoiding because it's a sensitive topic when it comes to finance slash investment banking recruiting. But due to the overwhelming number of times that this question has been asked in one way or another, I'm going to tackle it. This is a pretty heavy weight question in this world of investment banking, so I have my fancy shirt on to look more legitimate and qualified to talk about this. So let's jump into target versus non-target schools. As a quick overview, what do I even mean by target versus non-target schools? When investment banks recruit, and I almost wanna say this is probably the case for a lot of companies, but specifically for investment banks, they classify students out of undergrad and probably also MBA as target schools and non-target schools. The easiest way to think about it is, and really hate to make this comparison because it just further solidifies the banking douchey image. Disclaimer, this is not to get political. It's very similar to Greek life rush. And for those that go to a school that Greek life is not heavy on, I'm sorry for the lack of a relatable comparison, but this seems to be the most logical analogy. When you rush a fraternity or a sorority, Obviously, there are schools that are too big where a lot of it happens on a very concentrated rush week where you meet people live for the first time. They like you after their three-minute conversation and they are like, yo, you're cool. Come to our fraternity. I would say on a smaller scale school with much more of a personal touch Greek life setting, a lot of that comes down a pipeline or, hey, I know you from my high school. Hey, you're from my hometown. And there establishes this weird level of subconscious trust slash liking that happens there. It's a network you kind of did not work for. On the investment making target versus non-target school side, I can't say that you didn't work for it because the school you go to, you obviously worked in one way or another, whether or not your extracurriculars, your grades, those combinations, you work to get to that school. However, just due to history, the schools that the founders of a bank may have went to, and for other reasons that I will cover for the rest of the video, investment banks, especially those with a slightly smaller scale than the bulge bracket ones, typically hire directly out of a set number of schools. At first, this sounds relatively unfair because it directly limits your ability to recruit for a bank given the school you go to. There's no doubt in the semi-unfairness of this structure. At the same time, I think it makes logical sense. A lot of investment banking is not about being a brilliant rocket scientist or having unbelievable mathematical or quantitative ability. It's about being able to do the work that you're given, being innovative and being hardworking and having grit in what you do and being able to trust that when you give work to someone that they're able to carry that out fully. I think the basis for that in the target versus non-target school comparison, not to say that non-target students don't have this quality, but target students have the benefit of having that name as their undergrad degree and those that have already been there. So those that have the same undergrad degree will view this as, hey, this person shares the same label as me, therefore they must be able to do the work that I do. That was a typical Brian long-winded way of explaining something very simple. And to put it very bluntly without having to explain every little part, if you go to a target school, recruitment is a little easier for you because there are guaranteed spots at banks for those that come out of your school because either the company founders went to your school, there are people in high ranks that go to your school and a combination of both where they've continuously hired people from your school. They've enjoyed working with people from your school. So they continue to pick out of your school. Target or non-target, you don't belong in this category and you go to a school where finance might not be prevalent. The founders of the bank did not go to your school and there aren't many members or no members at all at that firm that come from your school. So you have to battle for a spot with all the other non-target students. Whereas the target students battle amongst themselves within the school to fight for these guaranteed spots. A quick note that might not be obvious, and as you guys can tell, I'm being very careful about talking in this video because I think this is a relatively sensitive topic and very easy to make it sound like you're degrading these non-target schools. And I wanna make it clear that that's not the case. There's actually schools that are great schools, objectively great schools that are high in rank, well-known, that are not target schools because they're just simply not finance slash investment banking heavy schools. They're either pre-med oriented, pre-law oriented, more in the field of 
humanities, liberal arts schools. They just don't have the banking pipeline because that's not their core competency. Just really want to make that clear in saying that because you're not at a target school for investment banking, number one, does not mean you can't do investment banking, but two, does not mean you're not at a great school. On that note, I think the other big question that I get in relation to this topic is how do I know if I go to a target school versus non-target school? It'd be great if there was a online depository of information that lists target versus non-targets. However, it doesn't exist. I would say though, that if you are already attending this school, you should be able to kind of tell that one, banks are coming to your school directly to hire. That is a clear sign of you being a target school. And also the flip side, if there's not much banking stuff going on, there's no banking club or a fund that your school manages and there's a group of students that manages it for the school and no one really seems to be talking about finance or banking, it's probably a non-target school. I think although there's no objective list of them, you should probably be able to tell once you start attending the school. Probably the hardest part to talk about in this video, but also the core of why I'm even making this video. The hurdles of going to a non-target or I guess the benefits of going to a target. I'll primarily focus my talk on the non-target part. I also think that this would benefit this audience the most considering those who are at target schools probably don't benefit as much from my videos as they're surrounded by experts at their schools, whereas non-target students probably don't get the most amount of help from their schools because investment banking isn't as established there. I think generally, and as a whole, also the same thing. I just, the sourcing my life out here. It's, it's just hard. You don't know what's going on. You gotta pioneer your way through. There's no one above you, directly above you, a couple of years ahead of you, a career dean that knows the world of banking. And as you guys can tell from my videos, recruiting for banking is kind of different from recruiting for other jobs. It's just the lack of resources, the lack of previous experience coming from that same school. That's just the reality. On top of that, as I mentioned before, there are no guaranteed spots at this bank for you. If anything, there is a very small pool of non-target students that all get thrown in and you kind of have to survive out of there through networking, getting your foot in the door, really working hard. And that is also just the reality. I would say on the flip side, and this is me being an over-optimist, and please let me know in the comments if I'm saying this without really understanding the difficulties associated with non-target schools, which I'm sure is the case. I think because you have to put in this work, you will become such an expert and you can't be laid back in your approach with the I'm in a target school mentality. It's kind of like what I read in David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, and I will not bore you guys with a philosophy slash sociology talk here. I do think those, and this is from personal experience of knowing people, those that come from non-target schools tend to excel once they get into the bank because they've put in so much effort to beat that hurdle. I understand that that's not really helpful in getting in, but I also do think that there are ultimate long-term benefits of coming from a non-target school. But overall, if we're being very real, it's really hard to break into banking just in general, but especially harder if you're coming from a non-target school. I can't just say that and drop that unfortunate news and not provide tips. By way of little background, I went to a liberal arts school, which typically aren't viewed as target schools, but because of historical successes of our alumni and just the existence of a business school at our liberal arts school, which is very unique for a liberal arts school, we were considered a target school for a pretty wide variety of firms. So firms came to my school, hired directly, had guaranteed spots. So I can't speak to the actual difficulties of being a non-target student breaking into a firm. However, I do have friends who come from non-target schools and I have seen and tried to help out in my best way possible. They're breaking in into banks. Talking is a little difficult today. As I always say in all my videos, and I've covered this extensively, network, network, network. It has to be through a network. You have to get your foot in the door and somehow show and try harder than the target school kids and portray that you're interested in banking. Your school might not be known for banking, but you're here to get it done. And once you start gaining the trust of a couple members, especially those that are higher up in the company, they'll start pushing you. They'll start pushing your resume. They'll give you more advice. They'll connect you with others. They might even connect you with a non-target background employee who might be a higher ranked senior officer and say, hey, Billy Joe is a great candidate. He goes to non-target school, but he's gonna make a great banker. I've seen it happen. I'm sure some of my viewers are literally products of that. It's possible. Outside of that, also unfortunately, and I'm also trying to be very careful with this, but you just have to try harder than the target school kids. It is just the way it is. And there is no easier way to put it, but one thing to keep in mind is it's possible. It's definitely possible.
Some concluding thoughts and words of encouragement for those that are currently attending non-target schools or may have graduated already from a non-target school. I think it's important to think about it like this. For you to overcome the obstacle and the hurdle, it's gonna be rough. I can't say that enough and I probably will stop saying it now because what is to hear from another person that your life is gonna be rough over and over again. I think the better way of looking at it is you might become the person that pioneers and makes your school a target school or evolutionizes the banking environment at your school and you feel very passionate about this. You wanna be up there in that firm at that bank and become the person to lead the way and pioneer and open the doors for future alumni slash students of your school so that they don't have to go through the hardships that you went to. I think that is a very good mentality to look at this. Obviously, the reality is the reality. You're gonna have to put in a bit more work, a bit more networking and compete with other non-target students. But thinking about it in that perspective might help out a little bit. And a last bit of more of a practical advice stream for those that are about to enter college are starting to think about applying for colleges or are at the beginning of their college career and thinking about possibly transferring or thinking about their careers. I would highly advise against going to a school just because it's a target school. And those that are banking crazy or finance crazy might think I am crazy. But realistically, I don't buy the idea that you really know what you're doing at age 18 or even 19 or 20 or 22. And given the current atmosphere of things and just life, I think you should not pinpoint yourself or pigeonhole yourself into a field, into an industry, into a job before you even begin college. I think it's important to adventure and to explore. And if you want that option open, sure, definitely have it be a consideration. But I would not choose a school solely because it's a target school because you know for a fact you're going to banking because reality is you don't. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Hopefully that was worth the weight of me avoiding this question for a bit. That's just my insight on target versus non-target. I do think, as I mentioned before, a more tangible approach would be a database of target versus non-target schools, but it doesn't exist. And I think you can figure it out if you go to that school and the banking atmosphere just doesn't exist. I think more importantly, as I've covered largely in this video as a quick, quick, quick one sentence summary. If you go to a target school, great. And you want to pursue banking, then, then it's great. If you go to a non-target school, it's gonna be harder, but I think you could do it. And the mentality to think is, the mentality the mentality to have is you're gonna be a pioneer. You're gonna get through it. All these resources are available. And I'm here to answer any questions as always. See you guys next week.